Hey there everybody. So this video is going to be a little bit different than most because I'm sure a lot of you have heard already that <laughs> Peter Lankov, who you probably know as the showrunner behind the Hawaii Five-O reboot, also MacGyver, and, and more recently Magnum P.I., mm -hmm. he has been fired by CBS and that that took place feels like a couple weeks ago at this point but earlier this week a Vanity Fair story came out with dozens of sources both named and unnamed talking about his behavior around them the hostile work environment they were a part of and ultimately some allegations raised by Lucas Till the star MacGyver towards him but we wanted to come on and have a little conversation about the importance of speaking up. What happened to cause this to go on for so long? Where do these shows go from here? It's, it's, it's going to be a complicated discussion because these situations, you're talking about a lot of different sources, a lot of things being raised, and a lot of responses back and forth. But we, we want to do our best to try to do this conversation justice and make sure that there's attention given and respect paid to those who have gone through so much. Yeah, and I mean, we love these shows. We've been covering these shows for a very, very long time. We've done interviews with Peter, with Lucas, with Meredith. It's We're very, from a journalistic standpoint, very involved with these shows. We're invested in these shows yeah. and we're invested in the people in these shows so we have had some of you come and ask us and talk to us just ask us if we're going to talk about the situation and we planned to we yeah. just for me personally i just needed a little more time to learn about what was going on i wanted to have all the facts and also i was just felt this like sweeping disappointment when i first heard what happened and it was just I don't know any other word to use. I was just so disappointed that Peter would do something like this and that these that these allegations were coming out. That I was just it made me feel so disappointed for everybody that was going through it and that he would do something like this. My disappointment has after reading this article and hearing more has now turned into anger. I'm really angry about this situation. Yeah, I'm I'm really upset about it. I, I, I'm upset about what everyone involved seems to have gone through through all of this. I mean I, I'll, I'll give the I'll give the full disclosure in that I've spoken to Peter a number of times over the years and you know he's always he had always been pretty supportive of us, when, whether it be things we've done in video form, whether it be things on the website, and, you know, and I, I've spoken to him a couple of times where it felt like there was, I don't want to say tension, but it felt as though his mind was maybe somewhere a little bit else, and he gave kind of short responses that changed a little bit here or there as the interview went on, and, you know, I just sort of thought at the time, it was like, okay, he's running three shows, he's incredibly busy, it's probably just one of those situations, but... The, the thing that's so important to acknowledge is, is that Jess and I, we're, we're media. And it's Peter's job to not, you know, make anything come across mm -hmm. to us to suggest that he is anything other than a professional. And it's hearing, it's hearing stories like this where you get the truth. Because it's one thing to put on a good air when you're talking to somebody for, like, 15 or so minutes, which is typically how long our interviews with Peter went, and then it's something altogether to be in a writer's room with somebody or be talking with them virtually every single day and have something go wrong. And we don't work for Peter. We work for ourselves. And it's very different having a dynamic where you are working under someone who has seemingly done the things that are reported in this mm -hmm. Vanity Fair story. Yeah, I mean, we, we've been journalists for a decade now, so the interviews that we've conducted, and we've conducted dozens, dozens of interviews over the years, yeah. there is never a situation where we're talking to somebody and they're upset or rude or saying things. Like, people are going to give us their best selves. And so 
if anyone's wondering if we've seen really anything like this with Peter, the answer is kind of no. Like, like Matt said, we have heard him kind of be feel a little bit off at the beginning of a call here or there. But legit, that could be anything. That yeah. could have been him having a bad day. That could have been he just uh, woke up. I mean, who knows? I just, I don't know. And this, it's just what what I think happens all the time. And it's not, it's not just exclusive to showrunners. It's exclusive to actors. Really, anyone who you have a perception of is that you want the reality to equal the perception that you have of them. And, you know, for years, I wanted to believe in this idea that, okay, you know, Peter is this person who's brought back these shows that a lot of people really, really love and that he's got a great environment and everyone enjoys all of their jobs. But that's clearly, clearly not the reality when you have writers, named writers, unnamed writers talking about allegations of just verbal harassment, of mistreatment in the writer's room, of being berated for various things, discrimination, just pure stress. The the things that are in this report are shocking. They're shocking, number one, that they happened. And they're shocking, number two, that this is someone in Peter who was on Hawaii Five-O for a decade. Like, this is not a situation where something just sort of comes up one year yeah that's the thing that i think why my my disappointment turned into just anger and i got i just feel really angry about it because it sounds like from this report that this has been going on for years and yeah. it wasn't just one person coming forward and then the next person is coming forward there's many people that were coming forward and then this interview came out where they interviewed like 30 people so it took another white male who's got power who's the star of the show lucas to actually stand up and say something and it's awesome that he did but it sucks that it all the other people yeah. that stood up and said something, nothing happened. It didn't change anything. And, you know, it's great that Lucas, who is also a white male in power, used that position to actually be able to make a difference. It just sucks yeah. that it has to be this way. And why are the other 30 people that went through stuff not... I don't know. Why are their voices not important enough? Why does it still have to be like this in 2020? It's just, it just also disappoints me. <laughs> it, it's just, it's so disappointing. I just, I pisses me off. It, I think it speaks to, it's a systemic problem. It's something that goes beyond just, okay, here's one showrunner who, you know, per all the reports, have done a number of very bad and just discriminatory things. It speaks to, okay, we're gonna we're a network that's only really going to try to make changes when someone big is speaking out in some way and th these are the things that bother me the most especially if you picture yourself a you know a tv writer and the tv writers it's a very difficult job but there is an era there's an air of glamour to it where you know you watch all these shows growing up and you get a job on hawaii 50 and even if it's not a job that you that like maybe you don't love the show but maybe your parents love the original show from so many and there's like so much expectation built into it and then you go into it and you're completely miserable i i just i i hate hearing about powerful people treating people under them like garbage when they are talented writers the, you're often a writer for a lot of reasons all too originally you're probably not one of the popular kids in school i'm a writer i relate to a lot of this in you know Me same too. and so you're already dealing with a lot of this insecurity so then you're going into an environment where it seems as though that insecurity is just being amplified and making you question yourself making you question your ability and then when a network isn't listening to you that just makes it worse yeah, and you're, and then on top of it, you're expected to be creative yeah. and create a story of a show. It's already a lot of pressure to be a writer on a huge show like this, and then to have that extra pressure from it being a really negative environment, and then you're expected to still be creative. I, 
I just don't know how they're able to do it. And it seems like a lot of, there's just a lot of turnover. And in general, CBS just seems to have a problem going on here. And it has been starting from the top with less and everything that happened there. And it this sort of boys club thing has just kind of like been trickling down into everything. And I just wish that CBS would get a handle on it. Yeah. Just if you all, if you know that there is a problem going on and it, they clearly knew that there was a problem going on here with Peter for a long time. Don't wait until somebody is going to expose your problem. Take care of it the first time. Take care of it now. If there's anybody else there that is acting like this, deal with it now. Don't make people like Lucas, who is, you know, saying that thinks he's being body shamed. He felt like he was thinking about taking his own life in this environment. Don't let people get to that point. Or some of the stuff that happened to Meredith Eaton. She's had an injury. She had to have a surgery. She's she's on set and she's told them what she needs, the parameters to be able to work. She's being forced to stand when she's had an injury like that for hours. She's crying. Who does this to Meredith? She's like the nicest person. Like, why would you do this? And, and I'm mad again. Well, it's, <laughs> it's a situation that's worth being mad about because I, the solution... Yeah, it's it's obviously so hard for CBS to follow this, but the solution is just it's so inherently simple in my mind. It's just think about the show that you're putting on the air. And let's just take MacGyver for a minute here. It's about a group of people who come together and work through their differences and you know, they all come from different backgrounds. They all have different specialties, but they're they are a cohesive unit who love each other and treat <laughs> each other with respect. Why can you not have your behind the scenes environment reflect exactly what people are seeing every single week on screen? What, how is that a difficult thing? And if you review it, and yeah, there are, there are issues that come up on every single set that are different, but there's a difference between a difference of opinion and beratement of discrimination of all these other things that are, are in these reports. How, how do you not see this? How do you not find a way to keep it from happening it's it's beyond me and i just felt like we felt like this was just an important thing to really sort of speak to because we we love these shows we love the the fans of these shows who you know it's a it it is a community that doesn't always get a lot of press and it's a community that a lot of media members sort of thumb their noses at yeah. shows like this and are kind of disrespectful. And I, I think it should be a warm, loving community of people who look for this escape and love the fun and the nostalgia that's with these shows. And it's just so dis- disheartening that tonally behind the scenes is a totally different animal than what's actually on camera. Yeah, so we we just wanted to come on and talk to everybody and let everybody know kind of where we stand on this, that we are standing with the shows and we are standing with the actors and we are standing with the crew and we are going to continue to cover these shows. We love these shows and we are really excited for the new showrunners that are coming in that are going to take over and are going to hopefully bring in a new environment and make this a really good place to work so that we can all feel good about covering the shows, enjoying the shows, supporting the shows. I mean, it's time. It's so long overdue for a change. Like CBS, come on, pull your pants up and deal with this. I'll speak for a second, I guess, on uh, Monica Macers, the new showrunner at MacGyver. And she's been on Twitter a little bit. And I really... I really loved what she's done because I she has sort of engaged a community already, talked about what she loves about some of these characters, and I feel really hopeful that she's going to do a good job and you know, treat people like Lucas and Meredith the way that they're meant to be treated, but also represent the show in a way that is deserved and make all of us just feel good about this ragtag group of underdogs you know that the phoenix foundation is and i 
I, I hope that we have better days ahead of us. I hate that all of this happened. I am grateful to Lucas. I wish it didn't take Lucas, but I'm grateful to him that we can sort of move forward knowing that these sets are hopefully going to be a lot more positive, but I, it, nothing gets better overnight, but in time, we, we were t there's steps yeah. being taken in the right direction. Yeah, I am also really grateful to Lucas that he actually went and did this because, I mean, Peter was in a very powerful position, even more powerful than Lucas. I know he's the star of the show, but they have replaced main characters on shows before, even on Hawaii Five O. people have been replaced. So, I mean, it could have gone another way, and I'm really glad that it didn't, and I'm really glad that he spoke up. And even just yesterday, Meredith posted on her Twitter a picture yeah. of her hugging Lucas, and it just broke me. And also still, like, filled me with this, this love that you can just see how much how much love and thanks yeah. there is to him for what he did because he didn't have to do that. And there were a lot of people that were not speaking up. Yeah, I, that that photo really spoke a lot of volumes to me. I thought it was so moving. I, I, I hope that they now can sort of celebrate the family that they have. We are looking forward to covering, discussing the new shows. Hopefully there's some of it that happens this fall. I know everything's kind of up in the air there, but... We did want to come on, talk a little bit about it, let you guys know where we stand, and that is with you know the writers, those who have been mistreated. We are always going to be with those who are underrepresented and mm -hmm. being treated in such a way that they just they don't deserve that. So thank you guys so much for watching, for listening, and we will see you here next time.